we work or will we have jobs in heaven? You see, heaven is a place where believers will rest from their labors because the Bible tells us this in the book of uh, Revelation 14 verse 13. It says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Mm -hmm. Now, I know many are surprised and will be surprised to learn that uh, heaven or, eternal uh, or the eternal state, we will, we will also be working. <laughs> now, remember one thing that we will have tasks to perform. In the New Jerusalem, the lamp is on the throne, okay? The lamp is on the throne, and his servants will serve him. Revelation 22, verse 3, it tells us about this. Revelation 22, verse 3, it tells us about the idea of heaven being a place where we, we launch in clouds, stum, uh, being able to do something for the Lord. See, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Are you seeing the point? So if we are God's servants, we're going to serve him. And uh, when you think about this, this is, uh, I may say, is some work. And uh, I know the thought of working in heaven may be, may be distracting sometimes and, and maybe you may wonder, but the Bible tells us we'll not be working. <laughs> you know, especially to those who have spent their lives in drudgery and, uh, you know, working all through and doing so many things. And they wonder, I, now I'm going to work again in heaven. But the work in heaven will be quite unlike our accustomed work in this world. Our job in eternity will be simply to serve the Lord and will be in a perfect environment. Now remember, we are the bride of Christ. Now what does a bride do? What, does a, what is the work of a wife? To serve the husband. So <laughs> think about at home. Does it pain you to bring your husband some food to maybe bring him some water and share some stories watch some movies share some few things here and there enjoy and uh, you know serve him in one way or another does a wife really feel agitated by that because you're serving your husband and i think that's why the bible shows us an example of a family here in on earth so that we can understand how it will be in heaven do you get agitated when you're serving your husband? Let me ask the wives. Because we're the bride of Christ. We'll be married to Christ. So we will be serving him. Enjoying time with him. You see? So God created us to work. That's our nature. From the beginning. We have to understand that humans were designed for the, by, the, by the Lord to work. Remember in the Garden of Eden? Adam made a job. And God prepared him in the garden to work it and to take care of it. So, the main reason why they were created is to have fellowship with God and also to work. You have to understand this point. Because the Bible tells us very clearly that Adam, Adam had to work. Genesis 2 verse 15. See what the Bible says. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Is that not, not work? Likewise, women also, they were created. They were created for what? To work. Just the same way God created Eve to be Adam's helper. Now, we will be married to Christ. So what do you expect? Definitely, we'll be working. We'll be working, but the kind of work will not be, you know, so much. Because even in the Garden of Eden, Eve was to, Eve was to serve and to work and uh, be a helper to Adam. See, verse 20, it says, And Adam gave names to all cattle, 
Adam was working, giving names to all cattle, and uh, the fall of the air and to every beast of the feast uh, of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. So the help meet. So Eve came to be the help meet, the helper. Just the same way God Himself in heaven. He's been working, doing so many things, creating the world, uh, naming this is the earth and this is the heaven and this is what and this is what. Just like Adam. And then God creates Eve for Adam to be a helper. The same way Jesus has created us. We are new creation of Christ, the new creation who will be serving Christ. Just the same way. Are you seeing the point? It makes perfect sense. You see, before the fall, the work God gave Adam and Eve was fulfilling. Okay? Before the fall, it was fulfilling. And uh, it provided a sense of purpose. Only after the introduction of sin into the world did man's job become difficult. Things became difficult when now sin entered the world. So think about it. Think about this. Genesis 3.17. Let me show you this. Genesis 3 verse 17. 3.17. See. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and as eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cast it is, is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see, right now, things are hard because there is curse. A curse which is on this world. But think about it. Working. You're working, you're working, you're working. And there's not that curse. How will it be? Right now we work, we till, we till. Have you ever asked yourself, how comes you can never go to the forest and just find fruits in the whole forest? Like bananas, apples, water. You can't find them. You'll only find weed. Because the, the earth is cursed. But later on when Jesus will raise out that, will lift up that curse, then it will be so beautiful and will... It's like we'll go back to the Garden of Eden. Basically, that's what it will happen. The fruits will be growing by themselves. All our work will just be to take care and to do the good. <laughs> you see? So, while the work is good, the painful toil we experience today is a result of living in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. That's why you work and you never get the fruits of your labor. You work and you do all this and you never enjoy anything. Because in our sinful world, work is honorable and still has the capacity to provide purpose and fulfillment. You have to understand that. Right now, even in this world, our work is honorable. Okay? The problem is that many things can get in the way of enjoying a job. Interpersonal problems. Interpersonal problems mismanagement, unrealistic demands, physical or mental fatigue, and, and all that. In contrast, work in heaven will be pleasant and satisfying. And there'll be no interpersonal conflicts, like we always have. You see people maybe fighting and saying, no, you took my place, and that, uh, people are fighting each other and saying, no, this is mine, no, that is yours. There'll be no those conflicts. There will be no impractical expectations or fatigue. And we will have the perfect manager, Jesus Christ. As a, there is a guy called Randy Alcon. And as Andy Alcon, uh, Randy Alcon states in, in this book, which is written, which is called Heaven. He says, we'll also, we will also have work to do. And uh, I'm quoting here, yeah? we'll also have work to do, satisfying and enriching work that we can't wait to get back to. Work that will never be drudgery. Are you getting the point? And now, another reason we believe that uh, we will work in heaven is that 
God describes himself as a worker. Remember, when, when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees why he was, uh, in their opinion, violating the Sabbath, Jesus replied, my father is always at his work this very day and I too am also working. Remember what Jesus told them? I'm also working. Why, why, are, you why, why are you distressed? My father is working all the time. John 5.17, let me show you. John 5 verse 17. He says that my father is working. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. So you guys, what, what, what's the big deal about me? And I'm working on, you're, you're saying why am I working on Sabbath? You see, the idea of God's children working in heaven should come as no surprise. Since the Lord himself works, and we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. He is the worker. You see what the Bible tells us? That God himself, he works. So you may be afraid of working and asking, Oh, will we work again now? I thought you were going to relax. No, you'll be working. Beloved now, are we the sons of God? We are children. So if you're a child, what does it mean? You behave like your father. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So how is he? He is a working God. He works. He created the heaven. He created the earth. He's taking care of every person. He's looking at our needs. He's doing this and this. He's a working God. So we will be like him. So don't think you'll be just putting your legs on top of a pillow and uh, just relaxing and watching Netflix. You'll be working. But the kind of work will be so, so good. Believers will have jobs in heaven just as the angels the angels have special jobs that they carry out in worship and adoration. The angels are servants who do God's bidding. God's work. Remember what the Bible says in Hebrews 1 verse 7? Hebrews 1 verse 7. See? The angels are working. And, the, and of the angels, he said, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. God's ministers, they are ministering, they are doing something. So the angels are not asleep there. Remember the angel who spoke to John called himself a fellow servant with you? Servant, he is serving. Remember in Revelation 22 verse 9. You remember this angel was saying, I'm a servant? Then uh, uh, Revelation 22 9. Then saith he unto me, see thou... Do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the saints of this book. Worship God. Hey, come on, worship God. I'm a servant. I'm serving. I'm working. There are no unemployed angels in heaven, and there will be no unemployed saints. All of us will be doing something. We'll be doing something. And uh, that's why it's very important that in our current world, we follow this God's command. That whatever you do, work, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. Everything that you do, you're working for the Lord. Why? Because the work that Christians perform in heaven will have the same goal. It will be an act of worship glorifying the Lord. The difference will be that in eternity, the work that God has prepared for us will be instantly rewarding, constantly refreshing and perfectly suited for who we were created to be. So right now, as you work, work everything as you're working for the Lord. Colossians 3.23. Colossians 3 verse 23. See what the Bible says. And unto whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, as not unto men. Work everything that you're doing because you know that the Lord, knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. You are serving. You are working. Even here, we are working. 
Just as the same way the angels are working. Just as the same way Jesus worked. And when we get to heaven, we are going to be who? We are going to be the brides. The brides of Christ. The bride of Christ. So what is the work of a bride? To serve the husband. So we are going to work. But the work will not be as uh, we see the works here in, uh, in, on earth. It will be a, re a rewarding kind of work. So yes, we are going to work. We are going to work in heaven. We are going to work. Okay? Now you may be there and ask, oh, will I be a partaker of all these good things? The only way you can be a partaker is through the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is all about understanding why and how did Jesus die. Why did Jesus die? He died for your sins. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, through 4, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And how did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood. Why did he shed his blood? Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So why did the blood has to be the one which is shed? Because the Bible says in Leviticus 17, 11, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. So when you remove the blood, then something has died. So why does he have to die? Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But remember something, that 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He shed his blood for us that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life are you believing in him all you need to do is understand that fact understand and believe in your heart and then confess it to god and tell him jesus now i understand that all that you did was for me so that you can save me because i was a sinner and once you do that my friends you're already saved and all these goodies will be for you. You'll receive rewards. You'll be married to Christ. And the things will come. And you'll not work for nothing. You'll be working knowing that you have your reward. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to hear something and understand. Please, you can like this video and also share to your friends and subscribe so that you can watch more videos that we post every day. God bless you and have a good time.